Hello guys, Winston here. Keen-eyed viewers, particularly those who follow me on Instagram, probably know by now that I've constructed an enclosure for my stock size Shapeoko 3. The motivation to do so was pretty straightforward. I was ramping up production of Gridfin Trivets and I needed a way to use my CNC for hours at a time without invoking the wrath of my roommates and neighbors. Not only is my garage adjacent to another unit, but the door to the garage does a horrible job at insulating the house acoustically. So, with sound reduction as my primary design objective, I set about planning out an enclosure that would enable me to machine at any hour, day or night. Now, given that there are a bunch of really cool enclosures from other makers out in the wild, I have no doubt that there are better designs than mine. Every design has its pros and its cons, there is no singular best enclosure. Some people might value keeping the workspace clean more than noise reduction. In that case, you can just build a really lightweight enclosure that just traps dust. Some people might want a sexy, easy to assemble enclosure and may be willing to shell out more for 80-20 extrusions and plexiglass sheets. Given the varying motivations people might have, I don't want to structure this video like a tutorial. I'm no authority on good enclosure design. And also, I can't really make a tutorial because I kind of um, misplaced a lot of my footage from the first half of the build. Instead, I'd like to more simply lay out the design considerations I had to either get the gears turning in your head or give you another perspective to draw from if you're planning your own build. So let's talk about the underlying structure of my enclosure. I chose to use 2x4s for the majority of the skeleton because I'm a cheap bastard. The price per linear foot of material is far lower than basically anything else. 1x boards, 80-20, EMT conduit, PVC, you name it. Plus, a nice dense structure will help dampen vibrations. I also wanted to insulate my walls for maximum sound absorption. My Shapeoko 2 enclosure had 3 32nd inch thick acrylic windows, which is great for observation and filming purposes, but I wanted to double down on acoustic performance. Again, since I'm cheap, I chose 5mm plywood for the walls. I was hoping the denim insulation I'd selected would block out most of the sound. This insulation, by the way, is the only kind I found that would fit in the 1.5 inch gap between my plywood panels. Usually, rolls of insulation are designed for home use, where your walls are at least 3.5 inches thick. I wanted maximum sound absorption, but I didn't want my enclosure looking chunky, so my 2x4s were rotated 90 degrees compared to the usual convention in construction. I used pocket screws to keep my structure as simple as possible. This made attaching my plywood panels really easy. Every panel was rectangular, and I didn't have to make any cutouts to accommodate awkwardly placed supports or weird corner geometries. The floor of my enclosure would be 3 quarter inch MDF. The thickness and heft of the material would aid in sound reduction and minimize vibration transmission. This is also where I drilled holes to pass through my vacuum hose and any electrical connections. If any sound was going to have a straight shot out of my enclosure, I wanted it to have to diffuse off the floor before reaching my ears. I chose a glossy white paint for the interior to bounce light and make my life as a video creator a little easier. At first I tried spray paint, but all that did was create a toxic fog inside the enclosure that would billow out at my face as soon as any wind kicked up. Brushes or rollers are the way to go. I purchased a cheap shop vac to use with my Shapeoko because I wanted a vacuum I could abuse with heavy duty cycles. It also had the word quiet in its name which appealed to me, but I soon found out that adjective was likely introduced by a deaf person on ShopVac's marketing team because this thing is louder than my original vacuum. In fact, from inside the house, this vacuum is more audible than my DeWalt router. That would clearly be a problem for long duration milling operations, so I built a box to enclose my ShopVac the same way as my Shapeoko. I used plywood to sandwich an inch and a half of insulation, and I made a really crude baffle in the back of the box that would break up the jet of turbulent air coming out of the shop vac's exhaust. This helped immensely with the noise, but it didn't address the fact that now I had a two and a quarter horsepower motor in an insulated box. During a moderate length CNC job, I found the temperature inside the vacuum box creeping past 140 degrees Fahrenheit. This is probably well within operating specs for the motor, but I didn't want to push my luck, especially with four plus hour jobs looming on the horizon. So, I purchased a router speed control box. These things are basically just industrial dimmer switches that limit the amount of current going into whatever's plugged into it. I dialed back power to the vacuum until I just barely had enough suction at the end of my hose to keep my suck it dust boot working without any change to its effectiveness. Not only does this keep my shop vac cool to the touch, but it also cuts the acoustic signature in half. Sharing the bottom shelf of my enclosure is a small air compressor. It's not really intended to be used during operation of the machine, but it is handy to keep around. The doors to my enclosure were cut from a single sheet of polycarbonate. You can buy these in widths of 36 inches, so that's how wide I made the opening to my enclosure. I cut it in half with a mini circular saw since I didn't trust myself to score and break it cleanly. 
I sandwiched my polycarbonate between two wooden frames which would give me some meat to attach my piano hinges to. No need to worry about drilling into and or cracking the plastic. Inside I have 5 meters of LED strips, provisions for suspending a vacuum hose, and a mount for my old iPod which I use to monitor the machine remotely. My chunky early model power supply is attached outside as is a power strip and random hardware for hanging things. And that's the great thing about a wooden enclosure, you can stick whatever you want wherever you need it. And that basically wraps up all the talking points I have for my enclosure. So let's cut to the real world so you can judge my creation for yourself outside the confines of pre-recorded dialogue and carefully curated audio. Headphone users, you're on notice. We're going live in 3, 2, 1. Hello guys, welcome to my garage. I'm not a big fan of this talking in front of the camera thing, but I will do it for science. I know it can be difficult to judge just how loud things are through a video, so what I'm going to do is fix the microphone sensitivity on my SLR and then talk to myself so that you guys have a reference point for the sound level in this room. So, we're going to start by turning on the router and then I'll ramp up the speed from 1 to 6. Ready? So, as you can see, well, here, the enclosure I built successfully addresses the noise issue I had with my CNC. I'm now free to machine as much as I want, and in a future video I'll show you guys what this enclosure enabled me to produce. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and if you're not already in the enclosed Shapeoko Owners Club, I hope this video has given you some ideas to mull over in your head. And remember, it doesn't need to be pretty to be effective. See you guys in a week or two.